Welcome to Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we are providing knowledge to build people with the heart after God. Please join us as we study God's Word today. First of all, we have to look at um, God's chosen people, uh, which is Israel. And remember, because he chose them, how many know if God chooses you and said he's going to be your father over you, he has to protect you? Is that right? That's what fathers are supposed to do. We're supposed to protect our home and our children. Uh, That's just the natural law of how things are done. But in the spirit, God says that he's going to protect Israel. Now here, it talks about the king of Syria who was being demonically influenced by the enemy. How many know the enemy, he's a spirit, but he's got to use a person. In other words, he's not just roaming around here on a hot sauce bottle with a pitchfork, amen, and we make fun of that. But he is a spirit living and activated trying to what, deceive people into doing some mayhem or destruction against society. How many know, remember in the Bible when Cain uh, killed his brother Abel, how many know he was influenced by a demonic spirit? Because it's not in our nature uh, to kill one another. Because God created us, amen, to be helpers one to another. It got distorted because of Adam's sin. Because Adam's sin opened the door for Satan to begin to come in and hide behind our thoughts and make us believe something that's not true. Here in the scripture, it has a backdrop that Israel is really under covenant. The covenant promises that God has given Israel has to go back with them slaying the lamb every year, amen, eating the lamb. Because that was the covenant that God gave. Something had to die. And because something died, the blood had to be shared. How many remember in Israel when the death angel came, God told the children of Israel because he's under covenant with them. He said, take the what? The blood of the lamb and put it over your what? Yes. So when the angel came by, he would see the blood and would have to what? Pass over. Amen. This is a good example of that. It's showing us that through the scripture that the man of God, amen, that God used through the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. We talked about also we need God to give us spiritual discernment so we can derail what the enemy is trying to do for us. Can y'all say amen? Now God would do that if we're in a place of being in any relationship with him. That's why the scripture said the man of God. So this is talking about someone who's in relationship with God. And anytime you're in relationship with God, God will what? He'll always speak to us and direct us and show us what we need to do and keep us from harm's way. It also says that he talked about how they, this uh, king had set up an ambush, but each time it didn't work. That goes to show you when the enemy is working through whoever, and if you're where you need to be in God, it's not going to work. Touch your neighbor and say, it ain't going to work. So we don't care what the devil's trying to do. Amen. It ain't going to work. Touch somebody behind you and say, it ain't going to work. Now, you have to keep in mind the beautiful point about this whole piece here is that we're talking about somebody who is in covenant. Covenant, amen, means that God's in relationship with them according to a promise. And the promise is that he's going to be our father. He's going to watch over us. He's going to protect us. And I like this because when you look at this, the Syrian uh, uh, king was so upset because he had destruction on his mind against this people. But he was so blind to the fact he didn't understand. These are just not ordinary people. These are the people who are under covenant and who God had made a promise who they cannot see because God, amen, he's a spirit. But when God speaks his word through the mouth of his prophet, amen, he has to honor what he says. To the degree, it doesn't matter who understands it, that when trouble starts coming our way, God will begin to defend those who trust in him. Can y'all say amen? Amen. Now, I like this because he got so upset, he called all his generals in his bedroom because that's where they had their conference at, in a secret and intimate place. Amen. Everybody wasn't called to come to that place, but he was was plotting a plan against people who were under covenant. He was plotting a plan who people who God says, I'll be their father and they'll be my children. He had no clue. All he knew he was going to destroy them and then the word of God came somebody said the word of God came When the word of God comes, it's a rhema word. It's a word of wisdom that gives you instructions about some knowledge that you need to maneuver. And the king took that information and began to follow suit with it and not be in the place where they try to apprehend him. Can y'all say amen? amen? So his plans were spoiled. In other words, they didn't come to anything. Let me tell you something. We talked about last week about important in the time that we're living in now right now. We need to seek God. Not, not for his protection because he's going to protect us. We need to seek God to give us knowledge about how we can move in that protection. Am I talking right today? Now one of the things you need to understand that we're under covenant. By the blood of the lamb. And this lamb is not a natural lamb. This lamb is called the son of God. 
His name is Jesus. He is the savior of the world. He shed his blood that we may be in covenant with God and God will now call us his children. In other words, we're under his authority now. And if that is true, what he did in the Old Testament, he's going to do for us today. And we will continue to do it if we stay under his tutorage and under by his spirit, he's going to protect us. Now you need to hear this. The world's not going to get any better. And listen, you can pray all day long and say, Lord, don't let this happen. Don't let that happen. Don't let this happen. But see, that's not the emphasis that you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on coming under his covenant because some things are coming on the world. We can't stop. But if you're under covenant, my God, amen, and you're under the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, God promised I'm going to take care of you. Amen. And nothing's going to hurt you or harm you because I'm going to take care of you. Now, if you if you're there, you got to stay there. Touch your neighbor and say, if you're there, <laughs> you're going to have to stay there. Amen. The Bible says that we're in the world, but we're not we're not of the world. Now, you hear this. One of the main purpose of getting God's wisdom is that we're under his authority. Now, I said this before the enemy. Amen. He's out to destroy every one of us. Are you hearing me? I passed out Wednesday night. A lot of you weren't here. The enemy has been doing this way before we got born. He's been doing it for generations. He's got a plan in place. There is something that I want to bring to your attention. I will pass these out after service if you would like to have them. Uh, Wednesday night, I brought to some people's attention. There was a young lady that was born in Europe. She's of the New Age movement. Anybody, have, anybody heard of the New Age movement? She came out with this writing. It was 50 years ago, 1950. My wife said 1950. In 1950, the enemy was using her. Remember? If, listen, you need to hear this very quickly. I mean, you need to hear this. Most people think when things happen, it's just a person that's doing it. But really, there's a spirit operating through the person that caused it to happen. Are you hearing me? Because sometimes in the world, we want to go back and see what, what, how they grow up, what was going on. But see, we need to wake up. There's some spiritual fo forces that are manipulating people to do what they do. When Cain killed Abel, are you hearing me? That was, not a, that was the spirit influencing him through the thing called jealousy and hatred. And he kills his brother. And how many know that's the enemy's job? He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Are you hearing me? 50 years ago, she came out with a, a book, and the book was 10 points plan to destroy Christianity. 10 points, she said. Now, this is 50 years ago, but listen to what some of the things she said. I'm going to just go over a few of them, then get back to what we're talking about. She said, number one, take God and prayer out of education system. This is 50 years ago. Take God and prayer out of the education system. You know, that's just like the devil. Because if you don't pray, that's the law of how God responds to us. Can y'all say amen? Number two, reduce uh, parental authority over your children. Are y'all hearing that? Here's another one. Uh, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. This is 50 years ago. But this is a plan by the New Age movement to get people to believe this. Because listen, if you don't believe in the word, you're going to believe in something. And then you're going to what? You get behind it and push it. The other thing he said here, it says, listen, this is another thing. It says, make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. 50 years, you said 50 years ago. And the last thing, this is one of the things I want to, the one last one I'm going to touch, I'm just going to touch five of them. Get government to make all these laws and get the church to endorse these changes. Touch your neighbor and say, we're at war. It's time to use your faith. Now, I've turned to uh, Ephesians 1 and 17, and then I'm going to come back to what I just mentioned here, because you need to awaken to understand that there's an erosion that's taking place in our society and in the world. And when I say erosion, er erosion means that a, a base or foundation of something is wearing away and is breaking down the formation that's surrounding us. Where people are today, 
They, they don't want to believe in the Lord's word. They don't want to trust in God. They want to trust in themselves and what the government says and all that other mess. But how many know that we as a people of God, we need to trust in what the word of God tells us? Can y'all say amen? amen? Now, it says here in the book of Ephesians 1 and 17, and I said that the church as general, we need to be praying this prayer that God will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge in him. Can y'all say amen? Because wisdom gives you the insight of how to position yourself. Remember, if I said the enemy is always in position to try to break down our relationship with God, break down our relationship with one another, break down the family, break down your finances, then we need a, a wisdom to operate in to what? To deflect that so it won't have any places to work in our lives. Can y'all say amen? Now, Ephesians 1 and 17, the verse says that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, listen, may give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. And revelation knowledge in him. Y'all hear that? Now, in him means that we're under another authority. Somebody say we're under another authority. We're under another rule. Somebody say rule. Now, the reason why I said that, turn over to Matthew 16 and 18. Because Matthew 16 and 18, when, when Peter gets the revelation, it thou, tells Jesus that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then God, Jesus tells him that flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Revelation is what we need to unlock the pressure off of us. Anybody ever been under pressure? Amen. When you're under pressure, it's going to cause you to do two things. It's very simple. I'm not going to get real deep. And I'm not going to cost you, uh, charge you for it either. It's just so simple. You're going to do two things when pressure comes. Matter of fact, put your hand on somebody, just lean on them just a minute. Just this, yeah, yeah. That's pressure. And it, the pressure has no respect to person. In other words, if you in the world, because in the world, the, the Bible said man is born of a few days and full of trouble. That's why I believe we need to be born again to get out of the trouble. Y'all hear that? Y'all worked on you about 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pressure, amen, is a part of life. And because pressure is a part of life, you're going to do two things in respond to how the pressure comes. One, you're going to either worry or you're going to pray. You can't do, listen, you can't do both. You can, but you're going to be found in the book of James where it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Think not that he should receive anything from the Lord. Are you hearing me? So if we can't avoid pressure and the world's full of tribulation and we're under covenant, then what we should be doing instead of worrying is praying our way out. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to pray your way out. Now we got to quit asking God to do it. Because Jesus has already done it. Y'all ain't helping me today. He's already done it. He's given us the victory. Now all we have to do is follow his commandments or his teaching. And what he teaches us is that if we need anything, he said, ask the Father, which is in heaven. Now, to ask God simply means a couple of things here. And I'm going to give that to you for free. When pressure comes on me, immediately worry tries to grab hold of me. It's a natural, listen, it's a natural response. Come on, when trouble comes, you're going to, worry's going to show up and salute you. But don't salute it back. No, 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 no. Because salute means you're submitting to the authority of the one who you're saluting to. Amen. Amen. I've never been in the military, but I know that. Because when you don't salute, you're being what? Disrespectful. It's all right to be disrespectful to worry. When worry try to come, don't you salute it? Matter of fact, talk to it. Is that all right? And you can say things like, God has not given me the spirit of fear. But what? Love, power, and a sound mind. You have placed yourself out of self-worry and placed yourself under the authority of God's word. Amen. Now, how many know his word will rule over worry? Yeah. Come on, am I talking right? Because yeah. sometimes worry has a way of beating you down. Touch your neighbor and say, don't let it beat you down now. Yeah. Say, hit back. Yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes we get beat down, we don't say nothing, beat down to the point we ain't saying nothing, and we're feeling what we're thinking, and that's not what God says. The just must walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word of faith that he says that you need to put in your mouth and make it a sword to talk back against your worry. Now listen, you don't have to understand how it's going to be fixed. Because the story that we just gave you, Israel had no clue that they were in trouble. But the man of God who's in relationship with God gave them a warning and by the warning they knew they were in trouble. Yeah. 
But when they did what God told them to do, my God, when we just the wisdom of God and we do what God tell us to do, something get ready to change around here. Amen. Praise God. I'm getting ready to come out of debt. Amen. I'm ready to come out of my fear. I'm ready to come out of my sickness. I'm going to come out of my worry, my oppression. Because you have a right to come out because you're not born in that. You're born out of that because you're now in another kingdom. And because you're in another kingdom, that means you're under the authority of God's word. Why not speak the word instead of speaking how you feel? Come on. Because how you feel won't move nothing. But it'll move you. But by God, when you speak what God says, amen, and believe that he's able, even though you don't realize how he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Now, how many of you know that the king of Syria was just confused? Because naturally, I planned this thing out. I planned it in such a way that I know I got them. I got my handcuffs. I got them hooked. I got them hemmed up. Oh, the Israel's over with. But let me tell you something. Let's get out of the house and just doing what God says we need to do. Can y'all say amen? So you need this week to pray out loud this scripture that God will give you. God will give you. Say this. That God will give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge in him. My time is almost up for this half. But let me give you a good example of what I'm talking about. When God gives you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge, it's like he puts glasses on you. Because when I look at worry, when worry come, I'm all bent out of shape. I mean, I'm at the point where, you know what? This ain't fair. How many ever said that? This ain't fair, God. How many feel like, you know what? I'm tired of worrying about this, but we keep on worrying about it anyway. Oh, you hear me? But what I love about it is that when you pray in this prayer that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge in him, it's like God puts spiritual glasses on you to look at worry a different way. Because the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge gives you what we call divine insight upon a natural thing. And then you're looking at it and you say, you know what, this is just a stepping stone for me to get where I need to go. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope and pray the word of God has blessed your life richly. If you would like to learn more about our church, please visit us in person at 2703 Northland Plaza in Columbus, Ohio, 43231. If you would like to sow a seed or make a donation, please feel free to mail it at the same location. If you would also like to learn more about our church and hear one of our messages or more encouraging words, and cannot visit us in person, please visit one of our social media sites. Our church is on Facebook. You can visit our Kingdom Faith International Christian Center Facebook page. We're also on Twitter. The handle is at Kingdom Faith INT. We are also on Instagram. The handle is Kingdom Faith INT LCC. And lastly, we are also on YouTube. Please type in Kingdom Faith International Christian Center on YouTube dot com to see more of our messages that are posted again may god bless you and prosper you in all you do in jesus name be blessed